What's up, YouTube? Today we are talking about logic. No, not the DAW logic. We're talking about Boolean logic or binary logic, which is a system which computers or machines use to think, I guess is the easiest way to explain it. So it's a pretty common thing in programming, electronic engineering, and all sorts of different fields where you may come in contact with a thing called Boolean logic. And what it is is essentially stuff like and, not, or and those kinds of things. I'm sure you've seen them before. And Bitwig actually has a very interesting way of using logic to be able to trigger different things within the grid. So I'm gonna talk about everything that you need to know about those logic modules today. Let's dive in and have a look. So in the grid, uh, over here in the logic uh, folder, at the far right hand side, you'll notice you've got a couple of these different, uh, they call them logic gates. So this is not, and, or, xor, nand, nor, and xnor. So I wanna explain what each of those do today. So the easiest way to do this would be to create a kind of drum sampler sequencer type of system. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in a mixer and then let's put in some samplers. So in these samplers, we're gonna load up some simple kick, snare, and hi-hats. Just drop in some samples over here. So what we wanna do is let's also put in a transport. So what the transport is gonna do is it's going to create a click on a particular uh, rhythm based on the clock input. So here, for example, you can see if we set it to like one over 16th, it's gonna flip-flop a one over 16th. So we can send this to the hi-hats. Okay, so here I've set up a very, very rudimentary drum pattern. Hi-hat is triggering on every one over 16th, the snare on every two over 16th, and the kick on every four over 16th. So the problem here is that notice how the snare triggers at the same time as the kick, and we may not necessarily want that. Check this out. I think it would be much more uh, musical if the we somehow triggered the snare only when the kick is not triggering. And we can do this using a logic module. So if we say use the, if we use the not module, and we send this to the not, and then we create an and module over here, what's gonna happen is it's going to, every time the kick triggers, it's going to send the opposite. So for example, it's going to trigger, it's going to turn the gate off. The and only sends a gate out when both the inputs are positive. So what happens is every two over 16, it's gonna send here, but only every four over 16, this is not gonna be positive. Check this out. So what we could do is we could, for example, have different times of the transport, like here. So let's say, for example, have one that's 32nd uh, and one that's on 16th. But we wanted some way of being able to kind of like choose when this plays. So what we could do is we could say, use an AND module, send this like this. And then what we could do is use a, another clock. And let's say for example, set this to like one over two. So you see what happens there? Like, this one only goes up and it only plays when both of those inputs are present. So while this one is positive, it allows that ratchet through. So here, I wanna set it so that we don't want it to play the ratchet if a kick or a snare is happening. So now we use a double not and like we created over here. So we want a uh, we've actually got the same knot 
using, uh, we've got one knot coming out of this one, so we can actually use this one again. And we want a, a knot for the snare as well. So what we do is we go and, like this, and the first one in there, right? And then another one, and then this one in there, knot in there, and then to the output. So if we wanted to double up, like for example, we wanted that 32s and we wanted the 16ths, what we could do is use an OR, right? And then send both of these to the OR and it's only gonna allow one of those gates through at a time. Check this out. So now it's gonna have the regimented 16th rhythm and it's gonna throw in some of those ratchets every now and then. Okay, so an OR will send an output if any of the inputs is true. And XOR will only send the output if one of the triggers is true. So this you can actually use to create these weird offset rhythms. Um, let me show you, it's actually easy, you can see here on the visualization of what's happening with these gates, the differences here. So do you see here, because the one is up and the both play at the same time, it just counts that as one trigger. But you could use that to create an offset. So if the one goes without the other, it kind of puts the trigger down instead. Check this out. So this is a really cool way of creating like an algorithmic rhythm and then just playing with the kind of clocks to get all sorts of weird things and weird interactions kind of happening. So you don't necessarily have to only use these kinds of logic uh, stuff to trigger sounds. You could also use it to trigger modulations, which is really interesting. So you could use it to combine different triggers to kind of randomize stuff that's you know, has, so for example, if you listen to this rhythm, yes, it's got that kind of thing which sounds like it's off, but it's not off. It kind of sounds like it is kind of musical and rhythmically, it, there is like a rhythm to it, even though it's off. Um, but it's because there's a solid backbeat to it. So it doesn't really matter how you change things in the uh, kind of like top beat or top loop, because that just creates a syncopation. So if we have a kind of solid backbeat, you can kind of do anything with those hi-hats and it should kind of work. So we could also just, like I said, use these to randomize stuff. So, so the dice in grid is like a trigger input and value output. So we could use this to modulate different things. Like for example, we could send this to the pitch and then like every time the snare is not playing, we can be randomizing the pitch so that it doesn't randomize and change the pitch like while it's playing. So chance is what's called a Bernoulli gate or a probability sequencer. So you can send an input to this and then use this to create more logic stuff. So for example, we could send, um, in fact, what we could do is 
Let's just put in a clock and let's put in an or. This is gonna go here, this is gonna go here, and now this is gonna go here. And now we'll be able to like trigger these ratchets like this, right? But then what we want is we want to create another dice and then let's set this to modulate that clock amount by using a modulator, boom, onto the clock amount. And then this one we can trigger with any of these logic outputs, it actually doesn't matter. The cool thing about this is each one of these is gonna create a wildly different sound. So it's a nice way of creating, like I said, these algorithmic beats. In fact, here, uh, instead of an OR, we want to use an AND. So we can actually just right click and change it. So these are only going to ratchet at the same time that this is sending an input. So here what we could do is start using logic to you know, add extra hits. So for example, let's use an OR, and then let's say tr trigger the kick on every eight over 16th. But we could, for example, like duplicate this and say like a weird number here. And so it'll be on the eighth of the 16th, but as well as like every now and then. Awesome, that's about it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm going to be uploading this instrument to my Patreon for my $5 supporters. So if you wanna know what that's all about, check out the link in the description. And as always, thank you for watching. Uh, if you haven't yet, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel. I will see you guys next time. Cheers.